Daniel Reed put together uh, this book that he called The Colombian Harmonist. Columbia being another name for America, having been discovered by Christopher Columbus. And so The Colombian Harmonist was specifically made for America. And you see that it's a plain and concise introduction to psalmody. In other words, how to sing the psalms. Plain and concise. At the beginning of it, there is... uh, some lessons in music theory, for real, including these scale degrees and how everything works together. And then there are several tunes. It almost looks like it's a hymnal, but within that tune, there's like only one verse uh, printed, and it's specifically for this singing school. So people would buy the book, they would come together, perhaps to the church or the schoolhouse, and uh, everybody in the village who was part of the church there uh, would learn to sing. They would learn the music theory. They would learn these tunes with just one set of words, and then they'd be able to sing on Sunday morning uh, the hymns of Isaac Watts or uh, the Psalms, and all would be well. Now, here's the only drawback. It's the late 1700s. By the time the Revolutionary War had happened, Bach had already been dead. Handel was already dead. Mozart was in his heyday, and Haydn and uh, they were in the classical period. But in America, just take a look at this music. We have things like, oh, uh, common meter time, but three out of four of the staves here, the C is backwards. We have an opening chord, and if you uh, can put that together, you see there's no third in that chord. There's no third at the end either. Isn't that old Renaissance practice? Yes, it comes from the Renaissance. And the melody is in the tenor. Why? Well, because they did that back in the Renaissance. Well, you know, by the second generation of Lutherans, they had decided cantonal style was the way to go, and they put the the melody in the soprano. Americans were still stuck with the other. You'll also notice that uh, like there's something wrong with the G clef there, with where the F sharp is placed. America is just not following the conventions that uh, Europe had well established. But within that, Here is an example of a tune that was well-known, still is well-known in uh, certain circles uh, that Daniel Reed had put together. Now, this is called what they uh, sometimes call a fuguing tune. Everybody kind of sings together uh, during the verse, and when you get to the chorus, which is the second line down, um, you see that the parts are coming in one at a time, almost like it was a fugue, but it's not a fugue. They come back together again. Um, Sounds sort of like a stretto section of fugue, uh, but uh, the, the, the harmony is much more simple, and uh, the whole thing works out. The, the words all do fit, and uh, we'll just try to demonstrate this a little bit. <laughs> Daniel Reed also wrote a tune called Windom, and I want to pursue that a little bit because he wrote it three different times, and then eventually uh, Lowell Mason came along in the 1800s and fixed uh, Reed's tune to begin with. So here is the first version, it was written in G minor. Needs to death, and thousands walk together there. But wisdom shows a narrow path. With the second version had fixed a lot of the parallel fifths, and uh, let's just follow this rhythm a little bit. Ba, ba, 
pa 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 do you begin to feel like if this were notated in 3 2 it would be better yeah you'll see on this other score that I've uh, put in bar lines and that, that would have been a better choice. There are also a lot of voice leading problems and uh, a lot of mistakes in that. So we'll hear this version. What Reed did is he educated himself better in what they at that point were calling scientific music the music of Europe and he was trying to fix his score so there wouldn't be so many parallel fifths and there wouldn't be so much voice crossing and the ranges would be better and you know all those rules of counterpoint he tried to fix all that and he did a fairly good job he, w- he went from a 13% can read happy face to a 30% what is the But then Lowell Mason came along, put the melody in the soprano, uh, organized it in actual harmonic minor, and uh, fixed virtually all the problems. Let's see if you like that third tune better. So there's uh, Wyndham 1775, there's Wyndham 1785, there's Daniel Reed's Wyndham 1832, and then there's Lowell Mason's Wyndham, which sounds like the real thing for us. Well, as uh, the singing school masters would go around from one town to another, they would write a tune in the town where they were. You're going to have your own tune. And sure enough, in Lowell Mason's book, there is a tune called Cincinnati. I think it would be worthwhile to learn this and, and uh, just to, for the sake of interest, see what uh, the tune Cincinnati is. From these narrow scenes of night, By this point, we're into the early 1800s, but singing these schools are still uh, pretty popular. And realms of joy and pure delight, unknown to 